Hello and welcome back to the channel. Okay, first to kick off, we've had this um, doing the rounds. If you are a conservative, you have no chance. Games journalism inside a outs click that runs industry like a private domain. Right, what this lady's basically on about is, even though this is more to do with politics, it still shows that um, like-minded groups of journalists are quite happy to band together to basically control and dominate um, areas of journal journalism. They, uh, they, and they just so happen to be Kotaku, Polygon, Vice, uh, Ars Technica, Game Daily, uh, GameSpot, Eurogamer, <laughs> who just happen to um, really pound on Microsoft, actually, and pull them down, um, especially in the g gaming. And you can see by the reviews. Um, but basically, they're just, uh, yeah, they like to keep people down. People won't write something or we won't say anything on Twitter or whatever because you spew one wrong opinion and you're asking for trouble. Basically, they're bullying their way through journalism, these sites, with a few others. Um, so this is this goes on to be a bit more uh, political and stuff, but it's just interesting to highlight that there can be bias in the media. This basically says it. This lady's come out with it. There is bias in the media, and it's a controlled source. Um, with sort of some leading journalisms, journalist places uh, taking hold. Um, some of the comments are quite amusing too. Where are they? They're down here somewhere. Uh, Kotaku, Polygon, Vice, blah, blah. So all the literal failing gaming outlets have banded together as some sort of woke coalition to portray themselves as a far larger legitimate voice by silencing all opposition through hate mobs. That's pretty much it, basically. Um, so that's an interesting article you should all have a look at. Um, that's what I mean. Read into it as you will, but I think it's quite interesting and proves that there can be journalism bias, which a lot of people say, no, there's not. Don't be stupid. No, there's not. When there clearly is, and you can clearly see it's all one-sided, even in gaming, and this is about uh, gaming journalism. This article is about gaming journalism. But let's move on to the next topic. So, following on from Forbes, who posted this, as I showed in my last video, um, the power of the PS5 and Xbox X series. This was only this is dated the 19th of February. This is, this is only like a week ago or so, whatever. I'm not even sure what the date is today. Um, but they had the PS5, for some reason, at 12.6 teraflops. The Xbox at 11.8. So they had the PS5 more powerful. And as I said in my last video, despite all evidence pointing towards the Xbox Series X being more powerful, Forbes thought they would show the opposite and show sort of the PS5 standard out in power. And I said, you know, I said they was wrong. And it turns out they was wrong. So here's the actual specs of the Xbox Series X. So here it is. And, um, yeah, Forbes were wrong. Again, uh, Xbox X, why is tall teraflops a big deal? Is it a good number? See, this thumbsticks thing is quite good because this fella goes into what 12... Uh, teraflops is for all those that are unsure and um, I will show you what ter 12 teraflops is um, <laughs> right so it goes on to say um, blah 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 what Xbox X series will include so on the technical side that includes SSD storage which will, will all but eliminate loading times real-time ray tracing for hyper realistic lighting effects and dynamic latency input which means we think that controls will be more responsive um, and the closest thing to actual specs we've seen is the promise that games will be able to run at 120 FPS um, and that Xbox Series will be capable of 12 teraflops. Um, but he's saying, what is 12 teraflops? And he tells you, tera, the size like kilo, mega, giga, a flop is a floating point of operation. In renewable terms, that's complex mathematical calculation. And S on the end signifies per second. So there you go. That's interesting for you all because it's best to keep up. Um, cause sometimes when uh, Philip Morris is the dealer gaming, he does see to walk, uh, gramble on with stuff. Great fella. Knows his stuff really well. But I think a lot of people get lost in what he's saying, uh, which is understandable. So there is breaking down. So when he talks about things, and these guys go on to say, um, does that actually mean uh, better? Talk to everyone's mean better. No, uh, as he gives an analogy, which I'll go into. Basic means you've got more, uh, how shall I put it, space for power. You've got more um, potential. That's the word I'm looking for. More potential for power. Uh, it just depends what else goes into it and how you use it. This guy's analogy is uh, fairly simple. 
Uh, let's, ta let's take the performance of cars as for instance. You can look at the engine of one car and see that it's got a displacement volume of 2 litres. If you see another car that's got 1.6 litre engine, you'd think you were safe to assume the latter is slower. On paper that makes sense. Bigger is better, right? But if the smaller engine has a turbocharger, which my car has got actually, and it does it does show a complete difference. I mean, I'm outpacing. I'm, my, my car's um, 1.2 turbocharger and it's outpacing 1.6 is easy. But what if the smaller engine produces more torque? What if the smaller engine car weighs less? What if it has a fast and furious <laughs> nitrous oxide button? In real world terms, the bigger engine isn't necessarily better. That's why we use other units of measurement, miles per hour, the top speed, uh, times 62 miles per hour for acceleration. And it just goes on to break down in the analogy of what it all means. What else comes into play will be the process on your PC is easy and it goes into say other things, um, graphics cards and stuff like that. This is yet to be revealed I believe, but so far it's looking promising. Let's just say um, Xbox is taking the lead because it's got 12 teraflops. So it's got the potential to be far more powerful depending on what the rest follows through. And knowing Phil, I don't think he'll, he'll be sloppy on the rest of it. He knows his stuff. They run a software company that's uh, massive. It's one of the biggest in the world, if not the biggest in the world. They know their stuff, especially as they work around PCs a lot. Um, so what else do we have in the Xbox Series X? 12 teraflops, variable rate shading, hardware accelerated direct X ray tracing. See, Direct X is coming to play as a lot of fanboys as well will say 12 teraflops won't happen in the Xbox X. Said Direct X means nothing, but it's actually massive and a lot of people use it, a lot of developers use it. Quick resume for multiplayer, multiple games and smart delivery. I'm not sure what the smart delivery thing is, but. Um, There you go, you guys to break down all what the consoles previously offered, which is interesting too. So you can see as an example, Xbox Series X, 12 teraflops. Uh, Xbox One X, 6 teraflops, so it's double the power of the Xbox X. Um, so it's triple the power of the PS4 Pro. And you know, this, just, this is very interesting stuff. I mean, if you look at the PS2, it's 6 gigaflops. You can see that you know, Nintendo Switch is one teraflop. This is twelve teraflops. So it's you know twelve times more powerful than the Nintendo Switch. But then exactly this Nintendo Switch doesn't rely on power to sell its games because it's a lot of its games. Let's be, let's be honest, are things like Mario. Its biggest games are Mario Kart and cartoon-looking games, which you don't really need the graphic uh, fidelity for. So and you know they're basically made, aimed at families and they don't really care for you know your God of War-looking games. Um, What's obviously missing from the chart is a PlayStation 5. It feels like we've been playing a big game of chicken. Exactly. Or more of a case that um, Microsoft has steamrolling at the moment and Sony's just stepping aside at every single stretch. Um, I mean, they won't even they've officially come out and said they won't reveal their price. They're waiting on Xbox to reveal their price first, which if Phil is clever, he won't. He will keep Sony um, silent. He will keep them guessing right up until the last minute and then if I was in reveal my price I would, I would say as far to go is in the week before launch then I say that's when I reveal my price so it gives Sony no room for sort of change or anything like that um, there we go this goes into uh, this is the other thing which I mentioned in my last video as well NVIDIA um, NVIDIA creating their laptops and their, their laptops can be more powerful than the Xbox Series X and as I said in my last video that's the video I want to get into sort of almost complete with the console gaming which is very interesting the only thing is I'll say because you get a lot of PC elites and a lot of people saying why I play consoles the thing with console gaming and PC gaming is that basically console gaming dominates because there's, it has its own developers. People develop for console gamers. There are AAA developers that solely develop for console, which are then ported to PC. The reason behind this is because um, the, the pirating is one of the main reasons. And on PC, a lot of lot of PC gamers won't buy their games. They will pirate them. And developers don't want to spend X amount of money developing a game solely for PC for them to not sell any because people are just pirated it or got it from other sources. That is the problem. That's what's holding back PC. 
Um, that's why you won't find exclusive AAA developers for PC. There's just not many. And you've got the only the big game which you mention every uh, PC elites will mention is StarCraft. They go, yeah, but we got StarCraft. It was a Kickstarter, and it's still it's still in development. Or we still I would say it's a Kickstarter, and it's still in the preview, so people will be able to play it for three years, but it's still not released. Um, however, I could imagine if with this new set of consoles, that game will most likely go to console, then will be complete, finished, and then PC gamers will get to see Star Citizen finally once it hits console, um, or once it gets more support from console gamers, but which is usually the case. But as I said, um, it's all fine buying a PC and saying, yeah, PC's great, PC's better. At the end of the day, you you all rely on console ports of games, and console does lead the charging gaming, and PC does follow. Um, but that's enough for that. I mean, this all goes on. This is very interesting. Tells you goes right into the costs and everything, and is a uh, knows his stuff. This fella. Um, let's go on to the next interesting topic. So Square Enix will keep releasing Xbox One and PS4 games alongside next gen versions. What they basically go into is saying that they will continue to make Xbox and um, PS4 games even when the next gen launches. Um, and they say it's mainly due to backwards compatibility. Um, speaking at a presentation this month, Square Enix President Yusoki explained that the PS5 and Xbox X series will both support previous generation games. In the near future, Square Enix will develop games for both generations and will hold off on developing next gen exclusives for the time being. So, after all the um, hate um, Microsoft got for saying they won't be making exclusives for a while, other people are coming forward and saying they will no, not be making exclusives. They will still continue to support the last generation games. And why wouldn't you? Those consoles sold a lot. You're not going to ignore your games selling that that massive um, stage, are you? You're not going to limit... Because at the end of the day, when a game... Um, when a console launches, within the first month or so, it only sells... Uh, three to four, five maybe million consoles. So what developer is going to make spend all the money making a game and then put it on a, a unit with only four or five million consoles sold? You're not going to make much amount of revenue from that, are you? Because at most, if everyone with the console buys your game, it's only going to sell four to five million. So you got obviously, just as Sony said as well, you're going to continue to cross-gen games. And this is why cross-gen is a thing. So you continue to sell your games across the whole... Expansive platform, so you make more money on your games. You're not going to make exclusives. Only an idiot would launch a game and make exclusives at the, at the beginning of a launch. Um. So, uh, and with Final Fantasy remake releasing ep ep episode on it, clearly, oh, I say that word. And the first part not scheduled to launch in April. I didn't realise they're doing that. Edward, to be honest, and the plan can ensure the entire game is available on PS4 when it's complete. Um. So there we go. So um, Square Enix, as well as Sony and Microsoft, have come out and said they're not going to make exclusives quite yet, and so they won't. There's a lot of talk that um, Spider-Man 2, even though there's nothing that leads to this, Spider-Man 2 will be a launch title for PS5. I can tell you now, unless it's cross-gen, unless it releases on PS4 as well, um, that won't happen. You will not get a PS5 exclusive that big. And I'll tell you why. Disney. Disney own the gaming rights. There is no way Disney want to make money. Disney want to make money from Spider-Man 2. So there is no way that they're going to release Spider-Man 2 on a console with only 3 or 4 million consoles sold. Units sold. There's no way you just, Disney will allow that. They will even make it multi-plat at launch. If, it, if they do do that next generation, they'll even make it multi-plat so everyone gets to plat, so they make more money, because that's what Disney want to do. Or they will make it cross-gen. Fact. So I just want to squash that talk of people saying PS uh, Spider-Man 2 will be a launch title for PS5, an exclusive launch title for PS5. Like two now, it won't unless Sony is stupid and Disney is stupid. And I know Disney are not stupid. They're making a lot of money. Um, Sony, uh, I'm not too sure about. But let's move on. So, um, this virus that's um, going around, you probably heard of it. So, Electronic Arts are new, uh, new to the pullouts for GDC. They joined Sony and Kojima. 
I know, who cares that Kojima was going? Um, so, basically they pulled out because they're worried um, that they, I don't know, that they're going to get this virus. Um, two things I want to squash here. Firstly, the weird thing is that they've pulled out from the conference in San Francisco, even though EA are just down the road. <laughs> they're just down the road. So it's a weird thing to pull out of something when it's just local to you in a way. It's not like, you know, does that mean that they informed their staff to not go out at all? You know? <laughs> don't go to GDC. Oh, by the way, just don't go out at all. Don't go to the mall. Don't go anywhere. Just stay indoors. It's a bit of fear-mongering. This is what I'm going to get on to. Um, so, we've everyone putting out the GTC event, and... Oh, let me just cover this, actually. So, Boston Mayor asked Sony to reverse decision to pull out of PAX East. Because uh, I covered Sony putting out um, last week. PlayStation firm should make its decision based on facts, not fear. And I agree with the Mayor, uh, which I'll go into at a later stage. So, the mayor of Boston has asked Sony to reverse its decision to pull out of PAX East, stating that the PlayStation firm should make its decision based on facts, not fear. Sony pulled out the game expo this week due to concerns around the uh, virus. We felt it's the safest option as the situation is changing daily. Uh, and that's going to show a playable demo. And um, I listed all what I was going to show at the show, which now they're not. And they don't seem to be showing anything at all now. Uh, now, mayor of Boston, Marty, has sent a letter to Sony. Uh, the Sony CEO stated that the risk of contra uh, contracting the virus in Massachusetts remain extremely low, which they do, and that nobody should cancel their plans to visit Boston. The mayor said that fears about the virus are fueled by confusion and lack of information, which has also led to anti-Chinese sentiment. sentiment. Um, business in Boston's Chinatown district is said to have suffered significantly since the virus outbreak began in China. <laughs> People are weird. Um, these fears reinforce harmful stereotypes that generations of Asians have worked hard to dismantle, Walsh wrote. Um, they trigger our worst impulses to view entire groups of people with suspicion, to close ourselves off and to miss out on the opportunities and connections our global city provides. Boston is united in our efforts to dispel these harmful and misguided fears. As a large international company, you have an opportunity to set a good example. As a leader in technology, you can show that you are motivated by facts, not fear. As a leader, leader in gaming and culture. Big words by Marty. But well done, mate. He's right. And um, yes, EA put it out. Even though they're just down the road from the convention itself. it's just It just shows the um, madness and the fear-mongering and the panic that sets in. So I'm just going to drop some facts, which I think Marty is alluding to. Here. So using this little um, thingy here, which is quite a useful thing, um, this shows uh, all the cases and the deaths that have come from those cases. So if you look at it, uh, in China there's been 78,000 cases with 2,700 reported deaths in China. South Korea, you know, cruise ship, <laughs> um, 691 people, four died um, in Italy. So you can go down the list here, and as it goes, um, I mean, it's 57 cases in America. Nobody has died. Um, United Kingdom, 13 cases, nobody has died. A lot of the places there's been cases, um, and generally, Nobody is dying. So on the grand scheme of things, I think if you add up all these numbers, you're going to get in the region of something like confirmed cases, 80,000. And even though it's not close, I'll round it up and exaggerate. Reported deaths is going to be 3,000. So 3,000 people dead out of 80,000 cases. Um, it's actually not too bad as <laughs> diseases go and viruses go. And then if you look at the world stage, because it... Um, I'll just actually just mention here, this thing is an epidemic, not a pandemic. The difference between epidemic and pandemic is pandemic is worldwide. It's a worldwide problem. Epidemic is, it's like isolated. They're isolated issues. That's the difference between epidemic and pandemic. Um, and as it stands right now, me looking at the figures, um, my chances of survival, fine. What am I going to do in my life? Carry on as normal. Um, because 3,000 people dying in, in 
um, out of 80,000. And the thing that seems to um, be in a lot of places, including the United Kingdom where I am, you know, quite a lot of people in the United Kingdom on it, you know, and only 13 people have got it. Um, it's not too bad at all. And this is where I think he's going. I think it's the media jumps on it because they like clicks and they like to exaggerate things. I mean, let's, let's go back to who remembers um, in 1999 when all electronic devices were going to were gonna die. Everything, every electrical was going to just vanish from the face of the earth because of... Um, Thing, uh, things couldn't measure the clocks couldn't measure thing uh, the time going to 2000 do you remember that remember all that and nothing happened um who remembers the oil oil was going to run out so they uh, the government and people made a massive tax cut on it um buy as much petrol as you can oil as you can because it's going to run out and it didn't um there's been loads of cases for history but i won't talk about it let's, let's look at um other diseases Ebola. Um, it's fatal to 35 to 90 percent of the time. Um, it's much harder to catch this thing. Luckily enough, um, it can only go. You can only contract it. I think through yeah, through bodily fluids such as blood, urine, feces, vomit, breast milk, saliva. So it's much harder to get than um, than the virus. Um, but look, um, only 28 over over two years, 28 or well, just under 29,000 people were affected by it. Um, we know that the virus, the other virus, um, has 80,000 people infected. So yes, much more people infected, but it is like a cold. You can catch it. It's it's airborne, whereas this you can only catch it through. So that's quite a lot, considering you only catch it through saliva and blood and stuff. 30,000 people caught it, and it almost killed half of them because it's got just such a high death rate. Look at that. So uh, let's look at the grand scheme of things. That affected 30,000 people. To say twenty thousand people died, uh, twelve thousand people died. Um, the other virus, eighty thousand people, only three thousand people have died. Um, and there's no cure to this either. There's uh, no vaccine or anything to this yet. So that's Ebola. You know, no, nobody says, John, mate, you fancy coming over to do tonight? Oh, wouldn't I? Would love to, mate. But Ebola, you know what I mean? If I get Ebola, I die. So I'd rather not go out. It just doesn't happen, does it? Um. Ebola is a bit, I suppose, a bit extreme, a bit, yeah, you know, it's hard to get, it's, you can't avoid it. So, let's look at this instead. So, um, influenza, otherwise known as the flu. Um, until recently, World Health Organization, WHO, estimated the annual, annual mortality burden of influenza to be 250,000 to 500,000 uh, all-cause deaths globally. So, up to 500,000 people globally are dying a year from the flu uh, in the uk alone in the uk 176 children just children died in the uk last year um so when 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 you hear there's a bit the flu go around at work or at school who doesn't send their kids to school who stops sending their kids to school who does who goes right i'm not going to work today what's that flu dave's got flu so i'm not going in Just kids home everyone stay indoors it's a guy it's a guy in um a guy probably probably in San Francisco right now with the flu. Who's stopped flights? To the, who's not going to San Francisco for this ever? Because this is this is sort of kind of my point that um, the the flu as the coronavirus both the same. They're both airborne. They're both carried exactly the same way. Carry pretty much the same symptoms. Um, you can't avoid them. They're airborne. They're, they're, it's like trying to dodge the wind. Um, if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. It's going to be everywhere, most likely, and it's going to happen. People will say, just taking precautions. Nobody takes precautions against the flu. Either you aren't aware that it kills people, or you just don't care because it doesn't affect you. Or overall, if you look at statistically, overall you getting it is very unlikely. More people dying in their homes... More people die in the kitchen a day than probably catching the flu. But you don't go, I'm going to avoid the kitchen. You know, let's, let's go in the kitchen. Let's not drive cars anymore because they're dangerous because you can die from driving a car. Because you can. You can die from driving cars. I'm sorry to spoil it. Break this news to you. Um, but this goes on to say how many countries and how many people die of the flu and it's a lot it's horribly a lot of people die from the flu 
What precautions do you take? None. I can guarantee none of you right now are taking any precautions to avoid the flu. And none of these conferences, if 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 EA come forward and said they're not going to GDC because the flu, you'd all laugh at them. Would you not? You'd laugh at them. Oh, someone's got a cold. Oh, it's just a cold. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly the same. Exactly the same. This, this, yes, it's a horrible thing that's going around at the moment, and it's a, another virus, but there's so many of these viruses that happen. SARS, we had the recent SARS going around. These things happen all the time. They come and go. We live with them. Eventually, we'll give it a couple months' time. The media will lose interest in this, and you won't care. It'll still be there, just like the flu, just like all other viruses and diseases in the world. They're still there. But you won't care. Cancer is another one. Cancer is massive, horribly. There is ways you can avoid getting cancer. Do you stop it? No. Do you stop going in the sun? Do you put on suntan lotions? Do you still go in sunbeds? You should do those things. You, 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 you know, I bet a lot of you still go out in the sun, don't put suntan lotion on, do you? You know it gives you, you can get cancer. Do you care? No. Cause, because a lot of the thing is, with people, until it affects them, they don't do anything about it. This is sadly what uh, happens with things like cancer, which annoys me, is that people don't donate to cancer a lot of times until either they've got it or a family member's got it. Then they do start donating to cancer. I think, oh, we better cure this now because I know someone that's got it. Um, but I'm sort of ranting and going off a bit here. Um, so at the end of the day, what can we do to avoid it? Nothing. Um, t I'm taking a precaution. You're not really, you're not really taking any precautions. You know, nobody's really being precautious. If you want to be really precautious, you'd lock yourself up indoors, never go out. That's how you're not going to get it. Starting to sound like a bit of a Ricky Gervais here in one of his uh, comedy stand-ups. But that's the truth of the matter. So I think it's all scaremongering and people need to uh, wind it in and calm down. Um, you're going to you're gonna get through this, people. You're going you're gonna to live. Or you might not. You might die. You might be one of the unlucky few um, that might die, which usually affects... The young and the old, or people with certain um, issues, problems, you know, body problems. Um, I don't want to hen end on a horrible note, so let's move on to something else, shall we? Okay, so moving on. Microsoft's Xbox Series X will be able to resume games even after a reboot. This is very interesting stuff, actually. Um, Xbox can do something similar at the moment, but um, what they're suggesting here is that you can actually even switch. You can, so you can be playing a game on yourself. Playing, imagine you're playing a game. Then a friend invites you into a game. So you can pause that game, go in, play another game entirely. When you finish with that, you can go back and carry on, continue playing the game you was originally playing, if that makes sense. Also, you can completely reboot your machine. You can just turn your machine off and it will remember where you are. So when you log back in, it will just post you straight back into that spot. So, you know, all those people that have got to dash off, you're playing a game. You know, you, you've know, you all been in this scenario where you're playing a game and you, you get called away or something's got to happen, phone calls, and you're like, oh, I've just got to finish this, I've just got to finish this, or you can't save it, can't save it. Don't worry about it. Just turn your Xbox off. Go away. Do what you need to do. Come back. Turn your Xbox on. You can carry on playing exactly as where you left off. No changes. This sounds really cool. I really like this. Um, they go into a few other bits as well. Alongside this detail, Microsoft Director of Xbox Program Management, Jason Ronald, teases something called audio ray tracing. It's not a term that's typically used right now, but essentially it's a spatial audio for immersion in Xbox Series X games. With the introduction of hardware accelerated ray tracing with the Xbox Series X, we're actually able to enable a whole new set of scenarios. Whether that's more realistic lighting, better reflections, we can even use it for things like spatial audio and have ray traced audio, explains Ronald. Um, so they're just they're, they're obviously not just focusing on ray tracing and graphics and just proving graphics, but the sound and which does make you much more sound is very important. I don't know if you realise this. It probably sounds more important than you can realise. If you watch any film, anything, everything has music and stuff over it to create tension and drama and stuff. You probably didn't realise it because it's sort of just come second nature now. If you took sound out of films, it would they would be crap. This is probably going to be more like you know, obviously not the films where it's going to be music and stuff. It's going to be sound effects and stuff because they really you know draw you in. Sounds a major part in gaming, so that's fantastic that they're pushing audio as well as graphics. 
But I love the idea that you can just turn off your computer, they turn off your console, and then just return and it's all there ready for you. That's a fantastic thing. Right, let's move on to the next bit and final bit of information, I believe. So, GameStop um, are looking for attention. Um, key PS5 features finally confirmed. Apparently, GameStop have said the PS5 features are confirmed. So, backwards compatibility is 100% coming to the PS5 and a move set to rival the Xbox Series X. Um, so, looking through this... Um, it says nothing about the actual console itself. It doesn't give you any details of its specs or anything. Um, however, it does give some sort of worrying things, I would say. Full 8K TV support. Okay, so you could possibly watch films in 8K on your PS5. You know, brilliant. Best spoke 8-core AMD chipset. 3D audio. Okay. Built for purpose SSD storage. Back, this is the important one. Um, backwards uh, compatibility with PS4 games and hardware. So they're not saying backwards compatibility for PS3, PS2, or PS1. It looks like it's going to be backwards compatibility with only PS4 games. So what do you think about that, people? It's not going to be full comp backwards compatibility, is it? So it's odd that they've said it's going to challenge uh, further up. It says they're gonna, it's going to challenge Xbox's. Um, Backwards compatibility, which is not at all, because Xbox comp backwards compatibility goes right back to the original Xbox. And ray tracing capabilities. Um, so what does that suggest? It's got ray tracing, or it can just do something like ray tracing. Um, all in all, game, who's it? GameStop? GameStop's um, rather naff breakdown doesn't put PS5 in good sort of good light at the moment, I wouldn't say, going by those, especially the backwards compatibility and the full 8K TV support, I mean, who cares really about full 8K TV support, everyone's only coming to terms with 4K, everyone's just buying 4K TV, 8K, who's going to buy an 8K TV, I mean, you can look up any 8K TV now, I think, I think they're starting the, the, the range bracket of about 5 grand, I think, an 8K TV, so who's going to buy a PS5 and then buy a 8K, a 5K TV to play on, that's just, crazy thing to push push for um so oh so they, they, they go on to say um that sort of info we're guessing would be say to ps5 reveal event i think they're going on about more the, the details of it um but what ps5 reveal event yeah if it's coming at all exactly the sony have not sony pulled out of gdc they've pulled out of e3 they've pulled out of pax so that's three conferences they pulled out of um for whatever reasons they're giving, but they did say also, and so there's a lot of the fan base that they can they can they can drop stuff anytime on Twitter and YouTube, and the more don't they? If they're putting it out of conferences, then cover it by not going to the conference, but chucking it on YouTube, chuck it on Twitter. But they're actually giving nothing at all, telling you nothing, and then we're just getting stuff like this from Gamespot, um, GameStop, um, backwards compatibility for PS4 games. You know, brilliant, well done, yay, fucking hell, you know what I mean? Uh, and then it goes on to the Xbox Series X. But, um, so that's all. That's all the news for uh, this week. Um, thank you all for watching. Please sub, share and like. And post down your comments what you think about the X new Xbox Series X um, power and the capabilities. Um, what you think about the PS5. Where is it going? What's happening with it? What's Sony doing? What's the price? And what games are you most looking forward to on both consoles? Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.